Ahlan wa sahlan, and welcome to Edupedia World Video. Intermediate Arabic with Laura El Albani. Introduction to Intermediate Arabic. Learning Objectives. By the conclusion of this video, students should be able to understand the differences between the basic, elementary, and intermediate levels in Arabic language study. They should be able to list the 13 disciplines included in the Arabic language science. They should be aware of the history of the Arabic language from pre-Islamic times through the codification of the language in the 9th century. They should understand the role of the instructor in guiding the student and finally, they should know how to be successful in Arabic language study. Mabruk, congratulations. You have completed the basic level, El Mustoa El Asasi, where you learned how to write the letters of the Arabic alphabet, as well as some basic Arabic words and phrases. You have also completed the elementary level, El Mustoa El Ibtidai where you continued to increase your vocabulary and formulate very simple two, three, or four word sentences. Now you're ready to begin the intermediate level, El Mustawa El Mutawasat. The intermediate level is quite different from the basic and elementary levels. Of course, you will continue to acquire new vocabulary. In Arabic, this is a task which will continue as long as you study the Arabic language. The Arabic language is rich in vocabulary. For example, Arabic has 11 words for love and hundreds of words for camel. You will never stop finding new words to learn and memorize. But the intermediate level is more than merely learning new words. With mastery of the intermediate level of Arabic, you can begin to have real conversations and express yourself in creative ways. At this level, instead of merely learning words, you will start the study of the sciences of the Arabic language, ilm el -loka. The sciences of the Arabic language are composed of 13 different disciplines. One, morphology, a sarf. Two, grammar, a nahu, or el irab three, writing, a rasam, four, meanings, el ma'ani, five, science which deals with metaphorical language, el bayan, six, the art of beautiful style, el bedia, seven, metrics, el urud, eight, rhyme, el kawafi, nine, the writing of poetry, a shar, ten, composition, El Inshat, 11, Public Speech and Oration, El Khataba, 12, Literary History, Tariq El Adab, and finally, 13, The Core of the Arabic Language, Matin El Loha, which deals with words, foundations, dictionaries, and lexicons. Just as a side note, some scholars group El Badia, El Bayan, and El Ma'ani under the science of Arabic rhetoric, Ilm El Balagha. In this course, we will focus predominantly on grammar and morphology, in addition to vocabulary acquisition. What is grammar? Nahu. Nahu is the Arabic word for grammar. Grammar, in general, is the set of structural rules governing the composition of sentences, phrases, clauses, and words in any given natural language. Grammar is the glue that holds a language together. Arabic is a Semitic language. Based on a trilateral root system, the Arabic grammar is very different from the Indo-European grammar found in languages like English, French, or Spanish, and therefore requires a good deal of focus and attention. Nahu is the study of the language and the various rules governing the words as they appear in a sentence. 
What is SARF? SARF is often translated as morphology. The science of SARF is the study of the internal structure of a word. The study of SARF focuses primarily on the Arabic verb, the formation of verbs, how they change, and the rules applied to them. You can think of it as verbology. The Arabic verb is known as fa'al, the asal or root, the three letters that are at the heart of any Arabic word can be manipulated to form up to 14 different derived verbs, each with its own meaning and conjugation. Learning basic sarf will assist you in utilizing the Arabic dictionary. The complexity of the Arabic language is mesmerizing. Why is the Arabic language so complex? For the answer to this question, we need to explore the history of the language. Let's begin with the pre-Islamic period between the 5th and 6th centuries of the Common Era. Arabic was, at this early time, predominantly a spoken language. Arabic was born in the Arabian Peninsula amongst Arabian Bedouin tribes. The Bedou were a people who moved from place to place. Very few Bedou remain today. The lifestyle of the Bedouin made it impossible to acquire large numbers of things. Because of this, the spoken word became the art form of the Arabs. The members of the tribe, who were the most eloquent at reciting poetry, were considered the greatest artists and scholars of the time. The poetry created in pre-Islamic times is still revered. These poems are considered the pinnacle of the Arabic language. The most famous collection of pre-Islamic poems, or qasidas, is known as the Mu'alaqat, or the Hanging Ones. Poetry was so important to the Bedouin tribes of Arabia that each year they would travel and congregate at Sukkokaz, near the ancient city of Taif, in present-day Saudi Arabia. Prior to the spread of Islam, poems were never, or very rarely at least, written. Pre-Islamic poems were handed down from generation to generation orally. Even today, the traditions of memorizing these great qasidas continues among school students in the Arab world. The Quranic Revelation The revelation of the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad began in the early 7th century. It continued for 32 years, between 609 until 632 of the Common Era and it began to spread rapidly. During the 23 years of the Prophet Muhammad's time, the verses of the Quran were memorized as they were revealed. The Prophet Muhammad himself was illiterate. He could neither read nor write. He dictated the verses orally and instructed his companions to write down the verses on whatever they could find, paper, cloth, leather, or even bone fragments. The companions would then read their writing back to the prophet, who would check it for mistakes. With each new verse that was revealed, the prophet Muhammad also dictated its placement within the growing body of text. When the prophet Muhammad died, the Quran had been fully written down. After the death of the prophet Muhammad, the entire Quran continued to be remembered in the hearts of the early Muslims. Hundreds of the early companions of the prophet had memorized the entire revelation, and Muslims daily recited large portions of the text from memory. Many of the early Muslims also had personal written copies of the Quran recorded on various materials. In the wars that followed, many of those who had memorized the Quran were killed. While the community mourned the loss of their comrades, they also began to worry about the long-term preservation of the Holy Quran, recognizing that the words of Allah needed to be collected in one place and preserved, the caliph, Abu Bakr, ordered all people who had written pages of the Quran to compile them in one place. The project was organized and supervised by one of the Prophet Muhammad's key scribes, Zayd bin Thabit. The process of compiling the Quran from these various written pages was done in four steps. First, Zayd bin Thabit verified each verse with his own memory. Secondly, Omar ibn al-Khattab verified each verse. 
Both of these men had memorized the entire Quran. Two reliable witnesses had to testify that the verses were written in the presence of the Prophet Muhammad. And finally, the verified verse were collected, collated with those from the collections of other companions. The spread of Islam and the Arabic language into non-Arabic speaking lands. After the message of Islam had spread well beyond the borders of the Arabian Peninsula and reached places like Persia, Egypt, India, El Andalus in present day Southern Spain and China, and as Arabs started to mix and live amongst non-Arabs, there was concern that the Quran and the Arabic language may be lost with time. It became critical to codify the language in order to permit non-Arabic speaking individuals to read and study the Quran in the Arabic language. In the ninth century, the rules of Arabic were codified. At the forefront of codifying Arabic grammar was Abu Bashar, Amr, Ibn Uthman, Ibn Kanbar, al-Basri, commonly known as Sibawaya. Sibawaya was a Persian linguist and a grammarian of Arabic language. His primary work, Al-Kitab fin Nahu, the book on Arabic grammar, was the first written grammar of the Arabic language. Consequently, various scholars organized Arabic meanings and words into dictionaries, and they established fundamental rules which aimed at preserving the Arabic language from error and loss. These rules form the basis for the science of the Arabic language. The role of the instructor. As your instructor, I'm here to guide your learning. Follow the course in sequential order. Don't skip around and don't rush through the material. If you have questions, post them and I will try to answer them for you or guide you to other resources. Our final topic in today's lesson is how to be successful in intermediate Arabic. The most important thing is to study something in Arabic every single day. You must read as much as you can. Start by reading small books on different issues in Arabic. Take a notepad and write the new words down. When you look up a word in the dictionary, underline it with a pencil. You must also learn through listening. In this way, you learn how Arabic is spoken and how certain ideas are conveyed. The best thing is to listen and act as if you understand everything you hear. If you can't find a native Arabic speaker giving a talk, then find recordings on YouTube. They're readily available. Try to understand the Arabic language in Arabic. Don't be like some people who only wish to translate everything into their own native tongue. This will take time, but it's very important and will cause you to understand Arabic as it is. Additionally, try to talk as much as you can to those Arabs who will correct you and help you in learning. Don't pay any attention to those who say, we don't say it that way. In learning Arabic, try to test yourself by gauging your progress. Oh, and just one more thing. Welcome to Intermediate Arabic. <laughs>